behind me is one of our largest sand and gravel operations, where we've been tasked to produce over a million tons of throughput to get 100,000 tons of concrete aggregate. In addition, we're going to share today how we've restored and reclaimed sections of this mine to bring back the natural landscape after mining has been completed. We opened this mine site with the end reclamation in mind. Given that, we have the two berms of topsoil and overburden, respectively, lining the southern border of the property. We've been backfilling the waste sand alongside of it, so when it comes time to close this up and restore it, everything is right there as we need it. What we're standing on top of right here is an excessive deposit of overburden, which as you can see is just essentially clay. Uh, it's, it's sticky, junky, can't really be used in the end aggregates. So we load it into these haul trucks with the 352 and haul it to a separate spot to be blended into base material later. The 352 right now, is loading about 100 trucks a day at 50 tons per truck, moving about 5,000 tons of material in a 12-hour shift. So this is where it starts. We're standing on the southern portion of about a quarter mile long mine face where you can see a very rich, coarse sand and gravel deposit. We're loading this out with two 988K loaders, throwing it in the feed hopper, where it's gonna get processed into the crusher down to a one inch concrete aggregate product. So one of the things with the mine face being so long is you have a variety of product concentration. Right here, you have a very coarse rock section, and then just 10, 20 feet over, you have a section that's almost 90% sand. Just for the sake of cleanliness, everything goes in the hopper. We mine it square and uniform so that the reclamation is nice and tidy. I always enjoy coming here because this is a very high production site. In a, in a good shift where everything goes right, we should get in the vicinity of nine to 10,000 tons of throughput. Given that, your rock percentage is gonna be maybe you know 15% if you're lucky. So once the material gets thrown into the hopper, hits a series of transfer conveyors till it hits the first screen. Um, that's a dual opposed Cedar Rapids uh, 7 by 20 twin screen and what that does is it segregates the rock and the sand. It takes anything over 3 16 of an inch and sends it to the crusher. Everything below 3 16 of an inch gets sent out to the waste sand pile. Coming off our superior telestacking conveyor, at about 800 to 1,000 tons per hour is this 3 16 inch minus sand. This is essentially a waste product. It does have a, an application for a commercial backfill, but at the speed we're producing it, we're just gonna use it as backfill for the reclamation process on this site. After the first screen, the material is joined with the previously crushed material, hits the second screen box and begins its circulation for final sizing. It'll enter the cone crusher and get processed down into a one inch minus, and then it'll hit the conveyor cycle again back to the final sizing screen deck. There again, we're running a dual opposed 6x20 uh, KPI box this time, and with that, it splits the products into two. You have your one inch by 3 16 inch concrete rock, and then you have a 3 16 inch minus crusher dust. The crusher dust you can use for backfill applications or anywhere that needs a little bit of structural improvement on the site. Um, but largely in part, it's, it's kind of a waste product. We will add it into base material if needed, uh, but other than that, you're kind of just left with a, a nominal waste product at that. We're sitting on top of our final product pile. This is our one inch by 3 16 inch concrete aggregate. From here, it's gonna get loaded and hauled about an hour west where it's gonna service ready mix plants throughout the area.
Before we began production on the mainline product of the one inch concrete aggregate, our customer asked us to make this oddly specific product. This is a 5 8 by quarter inch rock that's going to be used in the construction of concrete burial vaults. When we began mining this site over 10 years ago, we've always had the long-term reclamation plan in mind. Given that, we've stripped the topsoil and placed it in berms at the edges of the site, proceeded to mine the material, extract the rock, backfill the sand, and then replace the topsoil to restore it for an agricultural use, just like where we're standing. You can see beyond, there's another berm of topsoil that'll be restored later this fall. Over the last 10 years, we've been fortunate to be the only contractor operating within this site. Given that, we've taken a tremendous amount of personal responsibility in the mining and reclamation efforts that go on here to ensure that as we phase out sections of the mine, we reclaim them properly to restore them for agricultural use. We want to make sure that people know that mining is an interim use for a landscape. It is in no way permanent, and we want to continue to restore the land to better than it was when we found it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.